Welcome to Burner Tutorials. In this session, we're going to be looking at mesh optimization. Uh, first, we're going to look at why we need to optimize the mesh, subdivision and shrink wrap to build a low poly mesh. And then we're going to even further optimize mesh on the mesh collider. So when you're looking at mesh optimization, there's many, there's two main reasons why you would do it. One is to reduce the file size. Uh, so for mono spaces, it's quite important to get the spaces as small as possible. So it doesn't take as long to download. The other thing is to make the run, uh, make the space run as well as possible on as many devices as possible. So if you have high polygon objects with mesh colliders, well, it would be very difficult to make that run on a mobile or a standalone VR headset. So this session, we're going to be looking at using sort of some simple subdivision modeling or sub D modeling and the shrink wrap modifier in Blender to shrink our low poly onto a high poly. Uh, this is quicker and better for simple objects and it'll save some time. Just a quick shout out to Triple Dreamers for sacrificing one of his pillars on his recent space called The Nest. Check it out, it's, it's pretty slick. Uh, here is an example of uh, a very nice object, very, very smooth, but it's very, very smooth because the poly count is significantly high. Now, if you put a mesh collider on that, every single polygon here will be needing to be checked for the collision. So we need to uh, look at ways to try and get the same results, but at a much more low poly uh, version. So let's have a look. Uh, first, we're going to add a cube. And basically we want to sort of line this up to the object here. Now I'm going to add a couple of uh, polygons here. And because we've got the sharp edge here, I'm going to make sure that is cut in the middle there. Now I'm doing that with control R um, in, in Blender. Uh, I'm going to use this so we can do some proportional editing like so, very cool feature. And I'm gonna put that there. Hide that a bit so I can see, can kind of see the objects there. So, all right, next up, we're going to basically select all of those. Uh, delete them. Oh, no, we'll, we'll keep them up. No, we'll delete them. And then we can start grabbing these here. So we're going to go down a little bit and make sure this is on if you want to select all of the objects on the way through. So we're going to do a very, very quick... We're using, I can use scale a little bit. Uh, the main thing we want to do is be outside of the object. So as long as that's the case, then you can kind of go where you want. You can turn this off if you want objects to be a little bit more. Again. And as you can see on the on the left there, it's it's cutting into it. We don't want that just because the uh... now the reason for that is shrink wrap is a little bit finicky in regards to uh, shrinking things down to an object. So I find the best results are when you make sure the object is bigger than the thing you're shrinking it to. Uh, there may be ways around that, but I haven't figured them out yet. <laughs> Now it's getting a little tight up the top there, but that's fine. Sort of do these sorts of things here. And then maybe one more to square that off. All right, Let's scale that. Now I'm going to 
Grab these two, just to give it a little room there. And then we have a rough shape there. Now I'm going to close off the top just to make sure, or just to attempt to make sure the, uh, let's do this way. Uh, so click, click F. Now, if this, if F doesn't connect the two shapes, then that is because there is an add-on called F2 add-on, um, which can be found in the edit preferences add-ons. And if you want to find it, F2. So make sure that is selected and then you can use F to do some cool things there. All right. So we have our rough shape. Um, I'm going to add the shrink wrap modifier and see how that goes and then select that object. And then go apply. Hide that. And we have this. Now, of course, this gets a little bit messy. Another useful tool is the snap tool, which is up here. So if you put the magnet on and make it face, this is how a lot of retopology is done. Um, you can just press G and it will stick to the object that you've created. So let's... Uh, so we want to keep those underneath like so. Now the bottom and top doesn't matter as much. So we can just do what we like on the bottom just to try and make sure. Good. Now we actually need some more polygons in here. Right mouse click, click, and then go up here. And then go maybe there. Let's see how that goes for shrink wrap. So again, click on that. Didn't like that so much. <laughs> So there is, of course, a little bit of manual work, but there are some ways to sort of shorten the the time frame for that. So I'm going to put that there, put that there. Now, the main thing you're looking at is the the silhouette. Um, now I actually want to, I'm actually going to grab these, turn off this so it doesn't stick and then move these up. So it spaces them out a bit nicer. Just to get that flow. And same again with this one. Now it looks like we have maybe not enough around there as well. But let's wear these out a bit. Now the other approach is I could have done this at the beginning. So make the box a lot, a bit more complicated. So it shrinks, shrink wraps a little bit better than, than this did, for example many ways to retopologize a cat. And make sure you have that on so you can see through, uh, go through. All right. 
So I'm going to actually get rid of these. I want to try something. Delete faces. Now let's add a couple of these. So these are a bit smoother as well. They've got the sharper curve on the end there. So I'm going to add a little more in there. And then same up here. Now, fingers crossed. Uh, you have lots of different options here. So sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And this is where I was talking about um, sometimes shrink wrap is a bit of a strange one. So what I'm going to do is select all of the ones that I would like to fit better. So the bottom and the top. And I'm going to use Alt S to scale out along the normal. So it is much bigger than the object. And then I'm going to get rid of that and then apply it again. There we go. Scan, select that. That should snap a bit better. Apply. And we have our object. Now up here is a little bit not as good. So once again, I'm going to put my magnet on. Move that up there. Oh, it seems a bit off on those. Move that there. And then we can get rid of that. Now, if we put shade smooth, Do a comparison, shall we? Uh, so we have this polygon versus this polygon. Now, of course, it's not as nice, but it certainly looks pretty good for the poly count difference. You should always use Control A to uh, reset the transforms before exporting into Unity. Uh, that will save on scaling issues between the two applications. Um, and UV and baking a, a lot of bunch of things. So make sure to use control A to reset the transforms. So let's jump in and see what it looks like in Unity. If you use the option at the top left um, under shaded, you can go wireframe or shaded wireframe, you can see the difference. Now, of course, we can get closer. I could uh, double the resolution. So I'm going to make a duplicate of the original low poly mesh, and then we'll add some subdivisions to it. Call this mid. I'm going to hide those two. And then, yeah, put the, the multi-resolution on. Oops, subdivide. Then apply that. Export that. I actually did a pass at uh, making a normal map for this, but because the object is so large, the normal map approach didn't work so well with this particular object, but could with other ones that are more complicated and less shiny. So uh, that's what the middle one is there, but I get rid of that and you can see that the, the variation is, is quite problem because of problematic because of the artifacting. Delete, and then we put that on there. Um, and let's put these in order of the three qualities. So as you can see, it's not that hard to make mesh optimization. Of course, it depends on the, on the the product you're creating. But in this case, we've just used shrink wrap to retopologize to make a, a sort of simple shape like this in order to get from this to this to this. Now, I would probably go between these two, perhaps. Um, you could even go in and clean up some of these that you don't think you would need. So I'm going to go at five speed just to uh, get this a bit go going a bit faster. Uh, but basically, I'll be looking at the silhouette uh, once again. So you've got sort of the curves at the bottom, um, but most people probably won't look at that very often. You definitely have the curves on the the horizontal. So I'm going to keep most of those. 
but I do get rid of some of them a bit later just because the silhouette is basically doesn't change at all when I get rid of them. Uh, but for the most, because of the shape, I'll, I'll keep them as well. So yeah, in this case, we're not even using a texture. We're just reducing the poly count significantly with pretty similar results, especially for the difference in poly count and the fact that it's really shiny. So if this was less reflective, then this would be less obvious. The last thing we need to do, of course, is create a mesh collider that is even more optimized just so we can get as, as little collision tests as possible. So we have this very curved shape, but when it comes to collision, we don't really need to worry about uh, a lot of this. So I'm just gonna zip ahead uh, with this, but basically what we're trying to do is reduce the poly count as much as possible and still represent the main shape. Uh, so I'll get rid of a bunch of these loops, and that's why loops are very useful uh, when designing your space, so you can cut them out really quick later on. Um, so with that, I also make it a little bit bigger, uh, just so you don't get that overlap and sort of creating uh, a little bit of a buffer between the object and what you're running around with, uh, depending on, of course, the, the level design and how you're doing it. Uh, and then save out to Unity. Now for all three, I'm actually going to add a mesh collider. So mesh, mesh, mesh. Collider. Now notice how you've got this, which is the actual mesh. Now we want this one. Now you cannot, for example, you cannot, where was it? That one. So you cannot drag this object into it because it's the wrong type. So you have to actually have to drag this one into there. And then you'll see that shape. Uh, around it. Uh, so let's do the same with this one. Mesh Collider. There. And last one as well. Low. Mesh Collider. Okay. So when we play, when we send it to the playground, we have our objects so that's the low e, low polygon on there that's the medium there and you have of course the shape on this one is smoother than this one but once again, because it's so shiny, um, it's a bit more obvious than it, it, it could be. Um, but the polygon count is significantly different. Uh, so yeah, I think the middle one is definitely the best uh, compromise of all of the above. So that's it for mesh optimization and mesh collider optimization, uh, basically using the same techniques that we used re reducing it. Um, much easier to do when you have a sort of lower polygon. Uh, making a low poly of of this one would be quite difficult. So that's why the edge loops are really, really important for that when you're optimizing so you can get rid of them quite quickly. So yeah, thanks for watching and happy building.